Hey, JJ here with The Art of Value, coming to you for the first time at night from our new house, which we'll be moving in in a couple of weeks. It's not quite ready yet. So today I want to talk about Google and ChatGPT again, some about the Google layoffs and is ChatGPT a threat to Google? Google seems to think so. There's some news out where they seem to be stepping up their game and talking about ChatGPT and what they're going to do about it. So let's get into it. So first of all, the news that Google Alphabet is laying off 12,000 people, which is the most it's ever laid off. It's about 5%, 6% of their workforce globally. So it's not huge. A lot of tech companies are doing that. We've seen the news, multiple tech companies scaling back, getting ready for a recession and Alphabet is no exception there. Actually seen on Twitter lately of people who are from Google who have been laid off people that I follow. So it's definitely happening. It's happening already. So apparently US tech sectors laid off around 200,000 employees and counting as the recession looms. And of course, their stock market prices, their stocks have gone down in the last year or more hugely. So it's not surprising. We may see more unemployment, unemployment rising in the US. We'll have to see if recession is mild or even more severe kind of every company every big tech company has been laying off staff you would have seen that in the news already i highly doubt whether google alphabet is laying off people from their ai section given that they've got this challenge from open ai's chat gbt they kind of want to get the best people and keep them to deal with this perceived threat is it a threat we'll talk about that in this video so the giants microsoft and google laying off staff microsoft's announced in the last few weeks as well they're laying off staff and they've got this kind of fight on their hands of ai the most uh, the growth area i guess you could say and the most popular since chat gpt came out getting some consumer take up some very fast growth so I doubt whether these companies will be laying off. In fact, as I've talked about in previous videos about AI investing, I'll put the playlist at the end of this video so you can go and see previous ones if you like. Microsoft's invested over a billion dollars in open AI already. They're thinking about investing more, up to $10 billion, the headlines say, maybe more. And it's being valued, as I said in a previous video, at $29 billion already, which some say is a crazy price, but this is the this is the hype sector. There's a lot of resources going into it and no doubt Alphabet Google is putting resources into it through DeepMind. They bought DeepMind a, a few years ago, quite a few years ago now. OpenAI started and look where we are now where they've released this product that's hugely popular. And is it a threat to Google search? I've talked about this in previous videos, but there's new news out from Google that they seem to be concerned. So let's have a quick look at that. Again, as I've said in a previous video, Microsoft is not only investing in OpenAI, they're planning to use it within their services. It's talking about integrating into Bing, which of course could be a threat to Google search, or they want it to be a threat to Google search, being so much smaller than Google search. Google search just dominates the market by far, but if they can improve that, if they want to improve that with AI, and of course, Microsoft's got a lot of other products that they could integrate AI into as well. I could certainly see that happening. They've got a huge number of users globally, so not just Bing, if in, in so many products, they could in, try and integrate JetGPT in different ways. And so Google must be seeing that that might happen. They're seeing Microsoft pouring all this money into OpenAI and getting ready to challenge Google in probably a, a number of different ways. So what's Google? going to going to do about it so we have this recent article from the new york times saying google calls in help from larry page and sergey brin for ai fight so they've called back their founders so it says a rival chatbot has shaken google out of its routine with the founders who left three years ago re-engaging and more than 20 ai projects in the works so this high profile article new york times says Last month, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, Google's founders, had several meetings with company executives. The topic, a rival's new chatbot, a clever AI product that looked as if it could be the first notable threat in decades to Google's $149 billion search business. So the first threat in two decades. I mentioned that in previous videos. Now, this is really, since Google started, Google search started, as far as I can see, this is the biggest threat. When, when ChatGPT came out, I was impressed and a lot of people have been I'm sure most people watching this have used it by now if you haven't give it a go because it really is impressive it gives you kind of one answer instead of a whole list of links and so Google could see a threat on the horizon 
If you're getting value out of this episode so far, please hit that like button if you're watching on YouTube to help with the algorithm to spread it to more people and to give me that little dopamine hit. Thanks. So this article goes on. Mr. Page and Mr. Brin, who had not spent much time at Google since they left their daily roles with the company in 2019, reviewed Google's artificial intelligence product strategy according to two people with knowledge of the meetings who were not allowed to discuss them. They approved plans and pitched ideas to put more chatbot features into Google search engine. All right, so they are obviously trying to do a similar thing to what Microsoft is doing with Bing. I could see, is there a kind of war developing here? The re-engagement of the company's founders at the invitation of the company's current chief executive, Sundar Pichai, emphasized the urgency felt among Google executives about artificial intelligence and the chatbot chat GPT. So they've got Larry and Sergey in. Do, how much do they really know about AI? Can they drive Google forward into this new era? They do own DeepMind, of course, and there's a recent article about, about that as well, which I'll go into a little bit. So this is really the crux of it. It says the bot, which was released by a small San Francisco company, OpenAI, two months ago, amazed users by simply explaining complex concepts and generating ideas from scratch. More important to Google, it looked as if it could offer a new way to search for information on the internet. That's true, it's been trained on the internet and it gives you kind of one answer rather than a lot of links. You don't have to sift through, it's quick. I'm sure you've seen that if you tried it. Sometimes it gives you the wrong answer, but it's it's kind of quick and really efficient and amazing. You can see why they're concerned here, but do they have a similar product? That's the question. It seems like Google Alphabet does have a similar product that they might be getting ready to release through DeepMind. We'll have to see what happens, but it would not surprise me. Reports are that they have, do have something that's very good. So there's this talk of this code read at Google about the issue that says the new AI technology has shaken Google out of its routine. Mr. Pichai had declared a code read, upending existing plans and jump-starting AI development. Google now intends to unveil more than 20 products and demonstrate a version of its search engine with chatbot features this year, according to a slide presentation reviewed by the New York Times and two people with knowledge of the plans who were not authorized to discuss them. So this it implies there's a leak here and they've actually seen a slide deck with their plans of implementing AI in, in different products. So it's, gonna, it's kind of exciting times to see what Google will come up with, what Alphabet will do. No doubt DeepMind is involved deeply in this. There's this the scaling up of AI at the same time where they're scaling down the overall workforce. They said, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be the AI parts that are being cut back, cutting back on staff. If anything, they're probably trying to gain staff in certain areas or a certain quality of staff, the best in the world. Quite a few different AI things going on at Alphabet and they're talking about a launch this year, the 2023 promises to be a pretty exciting year for AI, and they seem to be a bit slow about it, but perhaps there's a reason for why they're slow. I think there's a clue here when they say, we continue to test our AI technology internally to make sure it's helpful and safe, and we look forward to sharing more experiences externally soon. Lily Lin, a spokeswoman for Google, said in a statement, she added that AI would benefit individuals, businesses and communities and that Google is considering the broader societal effects of the technology. So I think that's a good clue. They, they don't want to rush into it because they can see how powerful AI is as a technology and they don't want to kind of rush into it. My opinion is that Google does have it in the background. They do have it kind of almost ready, but they just kind of want to take it slowly because they're thinking about the, the wider impact rather than just blasting ahead. And, you know, Elon Musk has talked about this, the dangers of AI. A lot of people think about the dangers. So they, they want to be careful. They're not going to rush to one up open AI or, or whoever else. They kind of want to think about implementing it in a safe way and steady way. That's what I think anyway. But the New York Times article talks about the consequences of Google's more streamlined approach are not yet clear. Its technology has lagged OpenAI's self-reported metrics when it comes to identifying content that is hateful, toxic, sexual or violent according to an analysis that Google compiled. In each category, OpenAI bested Google's tools which also fell short of human accuracy and assessing content. But again, they're talking about a streamlined approach, going slowly to not to have these products that are kind of faulty in some way. So they say for the chatbot search demonstration that Google plans for this year, 
getting facts right, ensuring safety and getting rid of misinformation are priorities. For other upcoming services and products, the company has a lower bar and will try to curb issues relating to hate and toxicity, danger and misinformation rather than preventing them according to the presentation. So they want to be careful with safety is a big priority. So they don't want the situation that social media has got into, specifically Facebook Meta, where it's it's had move fast and break things. They're saying AI cannot do this. This is not the way to do this very powerful technology for kind of obvious reasons to anybody who's had who's been thinking about AI for a while. And I think this is a major concern for Google. It, this article kind of ends with the Google expects governments to scrutinize its AI products for signs of these issues. The company has recently been the subject of numerous government inquiries and lawsuits accusing it of anti-competitive business practices. It anticipates, according to the presentation, increased pressure on AI regulatory efforts because of rising concerns about misinformation, harmful content, bias and copyright. So they'll be very conscious of that to come out with a product that is kind of safe and that doesn't allow them scrutiny. Remembering that Alphabet's a huge company and OpenAI is not. So we've got this kind of small startup, small, you know, touching on nearly $30 billion worth, which is not small compared to a lot of companies, but small compared to Google for sure. Having said that, OpenAI is not just OpenAI. It's, it's Microsoft's involved here, another big tech titan. So it's kind of Microsoft against Google here. Will it be a big threat to Google search? Remains to be seen. As far as Google not moving so fast, there's this article from a few months ago from Time, which is headlined, DeepMind CEO helped take AI mainstream. Now he's urging caution. So the DeepMind CEO, Hassabis, hope I didn't butch that name, says these efforts are just the beginning. He and his colleagues have been working toward a much grander ambition creating artificial general intelligence or AGI by building machines that can think, learn and be set to solve humanity's toughest problems. Today AI is narrow, brittle and often not very intelligent at all but AGI Hassabis believes will be an epoch defining technology like the harnessing of electricity that will change the fabric of human life. This is how important they think it is and they want to get it right so they're not kind of just going to rush forward like any other software before. So here's what he says about moving too fast. In this uncertain climate that Hassabis agrees to a rare interview to issue a stark warning about his growing concerns. I would advocate not moving fast and breaking things, he says, referring to an old Facebook motto that encouraged engineers to release their technologies into the world first and fix any problems that arose later. The phase has since become synonymous with disruption. That culture subsequently emulated from a generation of startups helped Facebook rocket to 3 billion users, but it also left the company entirely unprepared when disinformation, hate speech, and even incitement to genocide began appearing on its platform. Hassabis sees a similarly worrying trend developing with AI. He says AI is now on the cusp of being able to make tools that could be deeply damaging to human civilization and urging his competitors to proceed with more caution than before. When it comes to very powerful technologies, and obviously AI is going to be one of the most powerful ever, we need to be careful, he says. Not everybody is thinking about these things. It's like experimentalists, many of whom don't realize they're holding dangerous material. Worse still, Hassabis points out, we are the guinea pigs. So he's being very cautious here. So this is the CEO of DeepMind here, which is kind of the competitor to OpenAI. And he's he's not in any hurry he's saying, but we need to be careful here. I think what he's saying is if we compete and we just blast forward breaking things, it could get really broken. And a lot of people know the dangers of AI. We've been talking about it for a long time. So I think it's here. These are the dangers that we're kind of running into headlong. So he wants to be careful. So the upshot is that Google probably does have something as good as ChatGPT, or if not better, or a number of tools even, but they haven't released into the public yet, and they're not in any hurry to. So I would say that they probably have got things behind the scenes, but they probably want to be protective of Google search if ChatGPT comes along and kind of takes away from their core business where they earn the, most of their money. So it's this kind of um, ideological thing of AI being can be dangerous against their kind of business catalyst imperatives of, of 
pretty much a goldmine, one of the best companies that have ever existed. Targeted search and advertising paired with that. Targeted advertising has been kind of one of the best businesses of all time, really. So we'll see where it goes. That's the situation as I see it now. So what do you think? Let me know in the YouTube comments or, of course, on Twitter at The Art of Value. What do you think about Google being threatened by OpenAI, ChatGPT, and Microsoft backing it up? Do you think there is a, actually a threat to Google search? Let me know. Or has Google got something really powerful just waiting that it's not ready to release it quite yet? They're going to be safe, but when they do release it, it will be good. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to be a pretty incredible, exciting year as far as AI and these natural language models are concerned. As I said, I've made a few previous episodes about these subjects already. I'll put a link on YouTube here and in the description as well to the playlist about GPT, Microsoft, Google and AI in general. And I'll be making more in the future.